All right, right. question. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, Brad, which, which been your emphasis this week? You know, just get back to work. I mean, that's, that's all you can do right now is put your head down, get back to work next game. Uh, and, and that's always the emphasis point. Win or lose, uh, that last game is behind you. Uh, you know, we've got a really you know, good opponent uh, that we've got to play this week. Uh, a team that, you know, has, they've had a couple of tough ones and could be sitting uh, in a really good position. So we know the battle of, uh, that we've got. And so that's where the, the whole focus has been. Well, I've talked a lot this last week about not making one loss turning into two losses. Have you felt that urgency from the players at all this week that they are kind of locked in more because of that? Yeah, I, I, I think they, you know, because we've had that happen once this year. And, and I think they understand that, that you can't let that trickle effect happen. Um, you know, guys in the past, they've been around, they understand. Uh, the new guys, that was their first go around at it. And so there's no. You know, at this point in the season, there is no more freshmen. You've played enough. You've been around enough. Uh, you've experienced, you know, win streaks, losing streaks, all that. So uh, the focus has got to be on just executing your play, your assignment uh, for 60 minutes. And that's that's been the focus this week. Um, and that's the way we're progressing. When looking at Missouri's offense, is there anything in particular that jumps out to you? No, I, I think what they do is, you know, what Coach Drinkwitz has done uh, for the last couple of years. You know, scheme-wise, it's really uh, challenging in the fact that they, they can uh, they can really run the ball. Their outside zone scheme's efficient. Their line does a really nice job. Their backs get downhill, uh, and then you marry in uh, some of their gap scheme uh, run game. And uh, over the last couple of games, you've seen sort of a progression of a QB run game as well. So. Uh, you know, it starts there. It always that offense always starts. You know, with a strong run game, uh, and they build from that. I think uh, Cook's really been gaining confidence again over these last couple games as well. Uh, you know, Lovett's a, a dynamic receiver along with Burden, and uh, you know, and you throw Cooper in there as well. And you know, Levin's played a lot of games and made a lot of big catches. You know, and there's a lot of confidence in him. You know, in some of those intermediate routes, and so. Uh, no, it's a really s solid, sort of balanced, well-rounded offense uh, that you can't just sort of key on one area. Um, and then you add in the, the motions and the shifts and, uh, you know, some of the uh, more exotic uh, style plays to, to create, you know, explosives. And uh, you got to do a good job with your eye discipline. With uh, DeAndre, how's Trevin playing at this point? Uh, Trevin, when he's been in the game, has played solid. You know, there's some things that we, we continue to, to clean up, just like every one of our guys. Um, but his his energy, uh, you know, his understanding uh, it has been good. Uh, and you know, when the ball's in the in the open field, I mean, obviously that his athleticism shows. Uh, still working on, you know, at times just pulling the pin. I think that's that's a rep and a confidence thing for him that. Uh, it's kind of like a quarterback where the more comfortable you, it doesn't have to be a super clean picture to throw the ball. You know, it's the same thing with an inside backer. Like it doesn't have to be a fully clean picture and the ball carrier has to have the ball in the hole. Now I can go right there. There's an anticipation piece that I can pull the pin knowing that he is going to show up there. All right. And uh, he's with every rep that he takes, you know, you can see the, the confidence and the comfort building. Uh, I thought he's had a really good week of practice. Uh, him and uh, him and Dierick, they have a really good uh, sort of rapport with each other uh, out there, and, and they're really good friends, you know, off the field. And so, I think it you, you can sort of see that on the field. Going off that, obviously, not one injury to happen. Were you excited to see those two play together, uh, given their kind of the future of those positions? Yeah, obviously there's there's always uh, an excitement when when somebody's able to play and, and see okay what is the next guy up path you know obviously you know you, you go through the season and you're heartbroken for a guy like Jalen Geiger, right and then you see that elevation of Jordan Lovett you know you're heartbroken for uh, you know Jaquez and watching you know him have to, to miss games and then the elevation of De'Aaron Jackson you know the, the same thing and so. 
uh, it doesn't matter what position, you're always interested to see, you know, that next person. And um, obviously, you know, what you sort of lose in experience, you gain in sort of youthful and exuberance. And so, but you also, you know, have to understand there's going to be mistakes and some other guys are going to have to, to fix those mistakes that they make. Um, you know, and, and, but we got to try to play as clean a game as possible. Yes, speaking of that, I mean, as you mentioned, Missouri throws a lot of stuff at you with motions and shifts and so forth, and you're missing your two most experienced linebackers. Who, who do you have to depend on to make sure that guys are in the right place? And as you mentioned, fixing things that they're doing wrong on the field before they get over to you. Yeah, you know, so obviously um, everybody needs to handle their own business. Uh, but, you know, it, it helps to have, uh, you know, a guy like Ty Asian behind that's seen a lot and, and played a lot and, um, you know, can talk and communicate and get those things, uh, you know, the, you know, the back end coverage is sort of communicated, reiterated. Uh, but again, I've been, uh, I've been proud of those two, you know, in practice this week in terms of their communication and understanding. Um, and, you know, obviously Derek's played a lot of snaps. And so uh, he's going to be able to, to help sort of be a calming force in there. But again, I think they, they're they a good pairing because they keep each other up, you know, and uh, Trevor's got uh, sort of a jovial personality and uh, it keeps Derek loose. And Derek plays his best when he's loose, when he starts to get tight, you know, or concerned uh, about a, maybe a misfit or a misplay or a mistackle. Um, and so I think they can, you know, bring the best out of each other. Mark mentioned something about the possibility of uh, needing the uh, Isaac Dan. I'm he, sorry? Isaac Dan, his, his, his side and his uh, way back up and all that stuff. He, uh, Mark seemed to think that he, he, he played better behavior than you. Yeah, I, I think, especially down there in the, in the SEC in the trenches, uh, girth is important. And, and you've seen sort of how well Dion has played this year. And it's obviously there's there's a lot of factors that, that play into that, but girth is one of them and, and one of the reasons that he's been able to, to be successful. And so, uh, yeah, we, we'd like to, to get that up a little bit and, and he's, he knows and he's aware, um, but he's playing with, you know, a high effort level right now and, uh, you know, trying to sort of, I say compensate for that just with, with energy and, and get some twitch, but um, yeah, as we go forward, we'd like to, to, to push that number a little bit. Brad, you talked about communication a minute ago, and you talked about it really all year. You had some breakdowns, it looked like, on Saturday. Has that been an, an additional point of emphasis this week? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say it's necessarily an additional point of emphasis. We knew going in, and uh, it's one of the things that, that makes that offense difficult. It's not. I think a lot of people think about the tempo and the pressure that it applies from a physical standpoint. There's a mental pressure that's sort of on you consistently. Like you don't get a break to mentally decompress from maybe a previous play or from, and, and so it's, it, it's sort of a heightened awareness and you don't, you can't replicate that at practice. It's, it's that just that, constant physical and mental focus required throughout an entire series and all it takes is one little lapse um, and you know it, it can lead to explosive plays that, that we can't have so um, again not necessarily more vital than any other week every every week's important with communication I think that's where some of those stemmed last week Mizzou use any tempo in, in this or is it? They do, they can, they can, and they can go varied. That's, you know, and sometimes that's even more difficult because at times when you're not expecting it, they can, they can spring and they can go tempo anytime they want to. So, um, you know, you always have to be ready for it. And, um, and so we'll see how that goes. Everybody good? Thank you. Responsibilities. Now, I know you don't like your teammates to get hurt, but now you get a chance to, to do more. Yeah, I feel good, you know. I'm sorry that Square got hurt, but I know like, I feel good because 
like listening to G-Jack, he's saying it's gonna be me and him next year. So, you know, it's kind of great to do that because it's gonna make me learn how to grow up even more, you know, to grow up even more and be a leader, you know, take the role as leader. Cause you know, next year it's gonna be me and him in the box. So we have to be leaders. How much does it help that you you guys are close off the field as well? How much does it help you on the field? Oh, it helps it helps out a lot, like a whole bunch, you know, because you want somebody that's you cool off the field, because you can play with them comfortable on the field. You don't want to be in about somebody that you're not cool off the field, but only cool on the field. So you know, it feels real great having him on my side, like as a best friend off the field too, because we can talk about it outside of football and on the football field. We can like you know communicate even more. Square's always been something of an extra coach for you since you got here. Is that kind of even more so now in this situation? Does he help you going into a week like this? Yeah, he helped he help us out a lot. But, you know, sometimes sit back and tell us, like, okay, um, think of it, me not here. Like, me going to the NFL or me going somewhere else. Because it's going to be you and DJ next year. So just think of it, like, I'm not here no more. And step up and do what I did or, like, do even better what I did. Go watch film, do this some more because you're going to be the boys next year. So, you know, it's it's good he be there sometimes, but sometimes he let us take the role that he does and keep doing what he did. For some guys, even DeAndre went through this. It was a little difficult early on with him using that voice and learning to do is that something you've had to, to learn too to to speak up and and, and kind of lead when you're out there nah because I, I got a big mouth so <laughs> <laughs> so I, i'm gonna talk regardless like either way it go like if i'm on the field i'm gonna talk regardless no matter what like if somebody down i'm gonna give them a smile no matter what i'm gonna talk regardless my mouth is big <laughs> how urgent are you guys to get back on the field and prove that you are a good defense because up until this last week in tennessee Y'all have been a pretty good defense all year. How, how much urgency is there to get back? It is real, it's real urgent, you know, because I can say last week we didn't play up to our full potential, you know. So I feel like it is real urgent to get back on the field so they can, like, we can show them what the Kentucky defense is really about. What do you see from Missouri on film? So Missouri, they do everything. Like, they outside zone, gap speed, counter, they do like, a lot of counter. And they do like, a lot of gadget plays, so you got to have very clean eyes. Because if you don't have clean eyes, then you can mess up, like, real easy. They'll, like, get you off the ball, like, real easy. What, what kind of pressure does that put on the inside linebackers when they do so many different things? It's a lot because, like, you see one thing, then you look at another. So it, it kind of put a whole bunch of pressure on them. So you got to watch film a lot to know what's really going to go on so you can already be a step ahead. Are there any similarities to, like, some of the – they call it eye candy, I think, to what your offense gives you in practice out here? Similarities? I could say yes. Because I, I could say, like, our offense helps us out a little bit because eye candy – like we got that a lot from offense, you know, in the spring and the fall camp. So it helped us out a lot that we said from offense, so our eyes can be real better and have discipline in our eyes. Missouri's kids have flat out said they don't like you all. And it seems like whenever you all play, it, it's beyond physical. It's kind of chippy. Mm -hmm. Do you look forward to that? What do you what do you think about all that? Yeah, I look forward to, you know, this is my first year playing in Missouri, you know. And like hearing Coach White, Coach White said every time I go up there and play Missouri, it's always a close game. So, you know, I want to experience that, like, just go have fun, you know, leave all the trash talking to the side and go out and play football because that's what, what it's all about. Has there been a piece of advice that a coach or a player has given you to kind of just stand out to you as you get ready for this increased role? Yeah, Coach White, he told me, like, he told me, like, straight up, he was like, just go play ball. He said, you're very athletic. He said, just go shoot your shot. He was like, no matter if you're wrong or right, he said, do it 100% because you can um, make up for it or you got somebody else to make up for it. Just go out there and play 100%. Derek, with DeAndre out, I know you and Trevin have been working together in practice this week. What's that been like? Um, I mean, we just, I mean, it's been good. I mean, that's going to, that's going to, that's what's going to be next year, me and him. So it's just good to get this, get a lot of reps in with each other and just play good. From Coach White just talked about y'all's, y'all's relationship. You and Trevin are best friends off the field as well. What's, what's that relationship like with you two and how does that help you when you're on the field? Um, I think it helps us a lot because we like, we can just, like we know how to communicate with each other. Like we know what gets each other going. Like we know what makes each other tick and stuff like that. So I think that's real good for us. How did you guys feel coming out of the Tennessee game? And it was it a kind of an emotion that you can make work for you this week? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I felt bad because we lost, but it, I mean, it's a good good thing that we got that we got. Like it's not good that we lost, but it's good that we got that um, experience and. And make us work harder in practice this week and then go to um, Missouri and play harder. Do you feel like the team has been working harder in practice this week because coming off a loss, want to get that bad taste out of your mouth? Um, yeah, I think we've been more more engaged and just working harder this week. What do you know about Missouri and what they like to do? Um, they they um they gonna run the ball, boot, and um take um take their shots. So we just gotta be good with our eyes 
and play the run real good and tackle. Did they remind you of anybody you've seen so far? Um, I mean, nah. I mean, I mean you've you've had a variety of offenses. Yeah, though. it seems like you see something different about every week. Yeah, because we Mississippi State was pass heavy. Um, Ole Miss tempo, and we just got done playing tempo, so they're very like they gonna get their plays and they gonna run. Tennessee scored a lot of points on a lot of teams, but after giving up 44 this past week, is there kind of a, I don't want to say a pride situation with you guys that like you want to come out and prove that you are a good defense? Because up until that game, you've shown you are that that so far this year. Um, yeah, I think yeah, I think it's a pride thing. We just got to come in for this game right here and um, not let that happen again. Since you stepped yeah. in for Doc Wise, just how do you feel like you've progressed since you've been in that starting role? Uh, I think I've been progressing well, um, just getting a lot of good experience for me and just keep getting better for myself and just keep getting better for the team and come, becoming a better leader. And also, you got to find a friend positive somewhere, right? He's got to find a positive somewhere in the boss. And you tackle the guy, how do you feel about that? Um, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I feel good. Just We worked on that. We all um, do that job every day in practice, open field tackle, short scribe, long scribe, so. Good that we kind of ran around. How much you talked about the communication between you and Trevin, but what about the communication to your teammates? So a lot of times that falls on the inside linebackers. How is that coming along? Uh, Making sure everybody's in the right spot, that sort of thing. Uh, it's coming along good. Like like I said, me and Trevin, like we got that good communication. So we we not to communicate with the whole team, and then we still not to communicate with each other. And so. Everybody good?